So um, we went through um, how we can code the network geometry, including links, tuning lanes, how we can assign the network speed limits to desired speed decisions, if you recall, and, and how we can specify them, not just for link and lane, for, but also per vehicle type, as you can see, um, or as I'm showing at the screen here. Uh, but in addition to that, we discussed temporary speed reductions when we are performing a left or a right turn uh, movement and how we can adjust for that based on the tuning radii or how big is the uh, a tur a turn itself and how smooth it is. We have covered as well how we can use conflict areas. Uh, we have completed a full example with conflict areas, erased them, and then did priority rules. Um, you guys now know that uh, the most appropriate use for priority rules is for uh, complex uh, decisions that dri or conflicts that the drivers have to go through or decisions that have to be made from a distance. Um, on the other hand, conflict areas are much more proper when it comes to simple one-to-one -one conflicts, um, similar to a right turn complexing with a through movement. Um, it's just a simple matter of changing the main movement to a green uh, conflict indicator. Um, the other use of conflict areas, of course, is whenever we decide to create a diversion conflict, red, red, so, Vehicles, if a vehicle is blocking the end of one of the lanes, vehicles will understand that they cannot, on the other lane, that they cannot go through and can um, or have to change lanes if they want to pass through a full vehicle. The, after we went through all of this, we have discussed signal timing and how to read um, a Calgary signal timing plan. And for your information, um, actually, the city of Calgary is changing the way they're displaying uh, signal timing uh, plans. Uh, but many jurisdictions uh, or municipalities do show the same kind of information. It's really in different formats. It's the most important thing is to know what each terminology means and how to read them appropriately. So last time we did go through Plan 311, if you recall, we read um, the interaction between the different phases and what uh, each additional time means. So back to the example again. We'll try to code this in detail. And before doing that, I'll just get rid of all of the priority rules that we've created here, uh, because we are now going to rely on the signal itself to uh, tell vehicles what to do. So quickly, I'll go through priority rules, right click it, show it them in left, expand the left, hit control A, you'll be able to select all priority rules and press delete. Now we got rid of all of them. I'm left out uh, with some stop signs from the previous uh, model because we have had a major street east west and the minor being north south. You can do the exact same thing. Go to stop signs. So you don't have to have it active. Show it in left as long as it's not locked. If you recall uh, what we did last time to background images when we locked it, you are not able to control it unless you are having that network object active. Uh, but in this case, it's unlocked. I'm able to delete it without being in the stop sign um, network object yet or having it active. So again, show it in left, control A, select all of them, press delete, or even you can do right click delete and that deletes the four of them for you. Now I want to create a signal control. The first step is um, to go under signal control in your um, toolbar at the very top of um, the selection in data. Once you have it, you'll get a drop down. Select signal controllers. You will get a new window displaying every single controller that will be in your uh, network. Make sure that you're saving your VSIM file and directory in the same place or the, your controllers that you'll be creating in the same directory. Unfortunately, because we're um, re remotely doing that every session, the uh, Carlton lab will delete all the files. So I'll recreate our directory again very quickly. Let's say I'm going to save every single file that I have for this VSIM uh, network right in, under VSIM training folder or directory. So I'll just save this as in this new location. 
go to desktop, recent training. This is where we are. We're creating signal controllers. Do you want to copy previous evaluation results? In this case, I'm not really interested because I'm saving this JSON file from a different directory to another one. It's asking me if I want to actually save my results for that. Um, I did not produce any significant results last time. We're just showing what this condition looks like. So we'll say no. Now, first step is to press add under signal controllers window the soft green sign that you can see in the screen. This will create a signal controller file for get one row where you can name it. Let's say this is control number one. If you're following a uh, naming convention or a numbering convention, and that's typically what you would do in an industrial project, you would make sure that your node numbers are the exact same as your control numbers so people can easily understand your model, review it, and even yourself as a modeler can um, easily uh, fix and QEQC your model later on. Um, you can name the signal controllers. So we'll be naming this as um, Country Health Boulevard or Sea Trail. Under the type of signals, now the previous JSON uh, versions did not have all of these signal controller types. Um, they used to have fixed time or a typical signal, or a typical VSIM license would give you a fixed time signal plan. If you have a, an advanced module, you'll get Bing Bad Air Controller. Uh, you're always able to, of course, have that. Um, so these are the main three that you used to have uh, previously. But starting on with versions 2020 and 2021 and onwards, 2022 is actually recently in the market now, um, you're starting to have much more variability with what you can do uh, with VSIM. What we'll be focusing on is the most commonly used um, control type that follows the NEMA standard, the Ring Barrier design that we've been talking about all this time. So you will be selecting Ring Barrier Controller. Now, once you press OK, what will happen is if you go out back to your directory, VSUN has, well, well, if you press actually save, VSIM should be creating a, uh, an RBC file for you that would represent your um, signal. Uh, it's created or not. So it did not create it yet. It's only established the location of the file. So I'm going to edit it again. What you need to press next is edit signal groups. That will show you the RBC module. This is where you will do your work. If I just for the sake of saving the file location and showing you guys the extension of the file, um, please guys, if you're unmuted, please mute yourself unless you have to speak. Otherwise, I'll have to force mute you through uh, the signal box. All right, so I'll just press OK for the sake of saving an RBC file to my network. I'll um, name this RBC file as the controller type or the controller name, Country Health Boulevard, SRC. Save it. Once you go out to the VSAM training file, uh, folder, you will notice additional files being created. The back file is a backup file that uh, contains a backup of your controller. In case something happens, the software crashes, you lose one of your RBC files, you can back it up through the rbc.back extension. But the main file that you'll be concerned with is the RBC file that you get created. That's what we are going to be working on right now. So as you can see, you have created the first segment, the controller itself. At the site, what will happen, or what this represents at site, is the, the logic that gets placed in the controller box that gets placed somewhere in the vicinity of the uh, intersection. So you can access the timing plans, edit them two ways. Either you right-click your signal controller, press edit, and then 
edit signal groups. Now you'll be able, if you show basic timing parameters that you can tell, um, you can actually show um, what the areas you'll be telling your minimum ingredients, your phase numbers, and so on and so forth. Um, everything that you start pressing will show you additional parameters that this one uh, will assign or that you will need to uh, code in this one, depending on the uh, characteristics of your signal. And we'll get through that during or using the example that uh, we discussed uh, from the category signal time plan very shortly. So the first thing I'll be doing, um, and guys, will you have the um, signal timing plan itself available under the directory, uh, under the example that's called fixed timing plan. Um, that's called intersection, so see that's the exact same location that we've offered. We're moving on to 311. You recall, east-west is on max recall and pen recall, operates for a maximum time. Northbound left, southbound left is an actuated phase. The north and south through phases as well as the eastbound left and westbound left phases are actuated. We know the minimum timings are seven for left turns, for actuated left turns, and for the minor through movement, the minimum through time is 10 seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll start with adding in the names of my phases. And I will really assign them in the same conventional way we've assigned phases before one all the way through to eight. So signal group number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Signal group name. It really depends on how you pick up on your phases. Typically, in Calgary, north-south, the municipality or the city likes to name the north-south phases as phases two and six, and the east-west as for the phases uh, four and eight. So we'll be sorting with phases one being northbound left. And if you recall, northbound left, if phase one is northbound left, phase five will be southbound left. This is typical RBC uh, design, if you recall last lectures. Now, phase one will be able to work well, or will not be able to work with phase two if you recall what RBC design looks like. And that means that phase two is going to be the southbound through movement. And that leaves phase six to become the northbound through movement. Similar idea. If we recall phase four eastbound three, what would work with phase four? That will be phase seven. And that will be eastbound left. And finally, phase eight would be westbound through, and westbound left. If you recall the timing plan we just showed, and hopefully here, all the left turn minimums are seven seconds. Well, the through two and six will have a minimum green of 10 seconds. So I'll go in and code that in. So seven seconds for northbound left. Southbound three is going to be 10 seconds for minimum green timing. Westbound is going to be seven. Eastbound is the main phase, so I'm not going to really care about that right now. Southbound is seven. Northbound is 10, seven. And westbound through is a main phase. Typically in Calgary, if the main phase is actuated for any reason, um, it would take a 20 seconds of minimum green time. But in reality, there is no detection to tell VSUM that there will be 20 seconds or not. We'll just be pressing a button here or a, um, a selection here called max recall. And what that will do is it will directly ignore this minimum and will operate the maximum every single time. Vehicle extension, the typical vehicle extension in Calgary or in most municipalities in fact, um, is about three seconds. Uh, this is a little bit different when you are dealing with high-speed corridors where the um, actuation can be uh, happening or the extensions can be happening with a passage time or a vehicle extension time of five seconds. Do you recall what that means? Vehicle extension. It, once you have satisfied your minimum as an actuated phase, 
the vehicle, uh, so the controller or that or for that approach will start responding to vehicle actuation. Every vehicle actuation will add an additional three seconds to the green time until you reach the maximum of that state. So I'll be sticking in with the normal uh, setting for Calgary, which is really three seconds. Now here is where your uh, maximum green times come into play. So if you go to, let's actually try to um, adjust the screen so we can show the um, timing side by side. No. So um, we'll start ahead now with uh, checking the maximum times for our through movements, or per movement really. So east-west, as you know, um, it does have, it, and this is timing plan 311, they do have a maximum time of uh, 45 seconds. So east-west is phases four and eight, right? So add in, in here, 45 seconds. In. Long phase, right here is about two, and let's bound three. Back to my timing plan. The maximum green time for the southbound left is 17 and a half seconds. Unfortunately, in VSUN, and either even the same case applies to synchro, you cannot have under free running or under basic parameters. You cannot have uh, decimals um, in your green time, but you can do that with your patterns. Uh, for the sake of this example, we'll be running free and we'll be rounding this value up to 18 seconds. So southbound left is 18 seconds. And if you recall here, uh, we know that the northbound left doesn't operate for just 17 and a half seconds, based on our discussion last time. It also keeps extending up to for an additional four seconds. So that results in 21 and a half seconds. We'll, round, we'll be rounding that up to, <coughs> sorry, 22 seconds. Back to the timing plan again. The northbound through and southbound two movement operate for 26 um, for the southbound through, but for the northbound through, it would have started four seconds earlier um, than the southbound through. So the northbound will take 30 seconds, the four plus 26 of green time, southbound will take 26 seconds. So 30 seconds for north. and 26 for south. Lastly, we'll be doing your eastbound left, uh, westbound left, and that's up to a maximum of 14 and a half seconds. And we'll be just, since we did round up the previous phase, we'll round down this one so we can get to the same cycle uh, length. Right here. Now you can code in your yellow times uh, normally. So for the uh, east west, your yellow time is four seconds and your red is three seconds. So four here and three for your red clear. Four and three. Back to it again. Northbound, left, southbound, left, three and a half and one. And with uh, RBC, you can input decimals um, into your uh, timing plan for clearances. So that should not be a problem. And again, for southbound, through three and a half and one. North and south, four and a half seconds and three.
and your left tail for the left turns for east and left and south and left and those take three seconds of yellow and one second of red you cannot enter decimal places for maximum timing but we adjust for that by using something called pattern and that okay. tells vsm you want uh, the full phase to become x number of seconds with the coded clearances figure out the green time yourself and that lets vsm chooses um, decimal places in green time the pedestrian signal group number is really what your convention for naming as. Typically, we uh, name, uh, for example, southbound through phase two, um, the pedestrian phase to be phase one or two, just in the hundred series. So we just give it a name. And that name is consistent with, consistent with the through movements that go with the uh, pedestrian movement itself. So for southbound through, the pedestrian will be one, zero, two. You are free to choose whatever number would like to but typically industry averages we like to associate it with some form of uh, similar naming convention to the through phase itself east and through phase four will take 104 phase six 106 phase eight 108 your walk time if you recall here is eight seconds all over uh, whether it's east west or north south so we'll do that here. Your pedestrian clearance is for east-west 27 seconds, for north-south 18 seconds. So 18, 27, 18, and 27. Now. I'll maximize the screen. And um, unfortunately, one of the annoying things with RBC, you cannot zoom in the display. So I hope uh, you guys can, can see uh, what I'm entering here. So we've just finished entering the clearance, the uh, timing, the um, flashing don't walk uh, man display. The startup phases are typically assigned to be the phases or the major phases of uh, the intersection or the uh, main roadway. In our case, it's really east-west traffic. So you don't really need to assign this in basin, but in reality, the correct starting sequence should start from the main phase. So you would be checking, starting with phases four and eight. Minimum recall, do we have any signal phase that is on minimum recall? Check your timing plan. Let's maximize it. We don't have any note here that says minimum recall. It's either max recall for east-west or fully actuated for the rest. And check to see if there are any notes in this plan. Nothing, nothing is really stated here. So I know east-west phases for an eight on max recall. So phase four is on max recall. Phase eight is on max recall. And phases four and eight are on pedestrian recall because they, don't, they are the main phase, they are operating under CNA, and they do not have push buttons too. NSE max recall, I have never got the chance to use um, this setting. And by the way, I don't know all the settings in RBC and no one will know. Um, if you're ever in doubt, you can always get to, uh, and I use that every time. Um, this is actually a good place to show you how you can find the relevant manual for RBC. So I'll just open up, and hopefully it's saved in the same area. So under your local C drive, go and look for PTB vision under program files. And go to your vSIM software version go to doc, go to English, and you will have any manual that comes with uh, VSIM um, right here. You click RBC manual, it will give you actually the updated display. It will uh, give you a manual displaying every single uh, component in RBC, every single parameter, what it means and uh, um, how to apply it. It's, it's a very useful uh, manual. Uh, whenever in doubt, go back to the manual.
dual entry is typically assigned for two phases. And what it means is, if let's say I put dual entry on southbound through and northbound through, what will happen is a VSIM or the controller will understand that once southbound through is operating, by default, I'll open up the signal and I'll call for the northbound phase two because it works with that phase. And it doesn't make sense to operate green for the southbound through and leave the northbound through as uh, empty uh, with no green sign. So you'll be selecting that for all three phases, including eastbound through and northbound through too. We're not going to cover advanced settings um, in this lecture. Uh, typically advanced settings is uh, what you assign if you want to add queue detection. You have different maximum times um, and you can increase uh, your uh, extensions, the ability of the controller to extend green times. Uh, red revert is uh, for un uh, conventional operations such as preemption, TSP, uh, when the signal gets interrupted by an event, uh, you don't want the signal to become green right away for the train. You want to stop traffic first and do that safely. And you want to stop traffic for from all approaches regardless. So that's where red revert would apply. And it applies when you're shifting, for example, when the controller is trying to shift from a yellow to a green for a specific phase, um, which is the reverse. Typically you go through green and then yellow followed by red, right? Um, in a case, let's say if a, I have a preempted phase and the train is coming, it will um, operate northbound through, but northbound through became yellow. That means the controller will ensure that that phase will get a red, so drivers do not get confused for at least two or three seconds, whatever value you assign here. Conditional green, all of these things are interesting, of course, settings that uh, you can apply to the controller. Um, it's really ad added conditions uh, when you're experiencing um, on uh, or non-normal circumstances mainly preemption, um, whether it's fire, trucks. Um, you can add your own signal coding um, as well or behavioral settings that preempt signals. And this is when really the, all of these parameters come into effect. The parameter that I want to mention as, and uh, that I refer to, the control's ability to expand or extend the walk time to make sure the whole pedestrian phase, including the clearance, and at the end of the green time of the phase. If it's a coordinated signal, you would use walk rest. If it's not a coordinated signal, you would use a walk expand setting. So we'll be applying walk expand for phases four and eight out of advanced settings. We're just right now entering our minimum timing settings. We haven't set up our ring barrier design or anything yet. The next thing is I'm going to um, go under expand. If you actually expand basic uh, base timings, you'll see uh, what we entered under basic uh, timing by, uh, by signal group, whether it's the basic settings or the advanced where we selected walk expand. I'll just jump to uh, pattern to sequence under base timings. This is where you'll be assigning your RBC settings. This is where you'll be putting your ranks. I'll change, if you go to the bottom left corner of your screen where it says pattern one and expand that, this is really what the pattern one means or the signal time plans you've assigned for pattern one, but we're not working with pattern one. So I'm going to right click that and select free running. Free running is what the signal will do under the basic timing parameters that we've just assigned. You go to your sequence and type in your ring barrier design, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have my first ring. I've added the four first phases. My second ring, I've added the four other phases. Now I need to create a barrier. Between phases two and three, get to the header of your sequence diagram and double click. You'll see a plus minus sign. If you double click, that creates a barrier. That will be some. Anything in this barrier cannot work with any phase in the other barrier. 